Great, so welcome to the very first episode of the Online Core Secrets podcast. Quick recap here because I forgot to uh, record. But basically today we're gonna to be talking about how to handle sales objections and make more sales as this is a very common um, problem and something that I can relate to myself. I, it was something that I had a trouble with in the beginning. The kind of like, when I say the beginning, it was sort of like the first 50 or 70 sales calls I did. It always felt very unnatural at least for me, to, uh, to help someone move through um, the, the objections that were going through their mind as to why they would want to move forward, right? And this was even though, hi Jasmine, nice you could join. And this was even though we had, you know, talked on the call and, and come to the conclusion that this was the best path forward for them, etc. But then when it came to the decision there of investing, that's uh, when things just started to fall apart and I got nervous and they could feel that I was nervous and the whole thing uh, just kind of crumbled, right? So what I wanna, I wanna break this down. I wanna start by just talking about why it's so important to handle sales objections in the first place, because I know that there's a, a common idea out there that you don't need to do it and that if you just do your job right, uh, it's not gonna happen at all, uh, etc. Uh, so I wanna address that first. Then I wanna talk about uh, how you should be thinking or what kind of frame of mind you wanna find yourself in as you're going into your sales calls and then having a clear practical strategy for, for uh, uh, thinking about uh, sales objections so that it's simplified and you understand what it is you need to be doing, right? And then I wanna talk about the major mistake that I see people making when it comes to, to handling objections is that they go into telling mode, they start telling the other person what they should think or do or how they should behave, etc., etc. when that is the crucial moment for you to act as a coach and you need to be asking the other person the right questions. So we're gonna take a look at all of this. We're gonna go through some common objections we're gonna talk about the, the concept of necessary commitment, and I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have as we're doing this, uh, if you're watching this live. If you are listening to this on, uh, on Spotify or Google or uh, Apple, uh, I don't know what their platform is called actually, but if you are listening there, uh, you can join our Online Core Secrets Facebook group and because we go live once a week with these episodes and that way you can interact with me live. I can answer all your questions and you can get the answers that you're looking for. So what I would like you to do, the, the ones of you that are live, is to just uh, comment down if you, get a, if you have a very common sales objection that you're constantly getting and, and then we can take a look at it. Okay, so let's talk about why you need to handle sales objections. So, you know, many times I go into other Facebook groups and I look at, at uh, sometimes this question pops up, like how, what do you say if someone says, I can't afford it, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And these conversations, they always tend to blossom into these, these intensive debates about that you shouldn't be manipulating people and you shouldn't be, you shouldn't push people and you shouldn't do anything uh, to, to uh, convince someone or persuade them or anything of the sorts. And it, I think it's kind of scary seeing uh, how common this uh, idea is, is that, that you should not uh, try to, um, you know, help the other person to make an empowered decision, because that's what this is all about. S handling sales objections uh, is not about convincing the other person. It's not about pushing the other person to do what you want. It's not about pulling or anything of the sorts. It's nothing like that at all when it's done right. So like everything else in life, there's a bad way of doing things and there's a good way of doing things. There's an unethical way of doing things and there's an ethical way of doing things. So. And I've had this experience myself going on a lot of sales calls and I reach the end and I feel like the other person is, doesn't really care about me and what I think. Uh, it, all they really want is to just 
have a specific behavior from me and I feel objectified and then the trust gets broken and it doesn't work, right? So if I end up buying in those, in those situations, it's in spite of them being bad at sales, right? And that's not what we want. We want our sales process to be encouraging for people, right? So Yasmin is saying, the usual one is I need to talk to my partner and get back to you as it is a lot of money. Okay, great. We, we can address that one as well. So uh, the important thing to remember here is that you're coming from the right place. You're helping someone. Uh, you're helping the person you're talking with. And what you're helping them with is to make a clear decision between a yes and a no, right? Because the last thing we want is to leave someone in a maybe. And the reason for that is that that is no way for you to live your life. It is no way for me to live my life. It is no way for anyone to live their life because nothing ever gets achieved by choosing maybe, right? So being decisive, it's just not something that a lot of us get taught in school and growing up, etc. And the best way you can help someone is to guide them to that frame of mind where, look, if you are if you're not sure, let's figure out why you're not sure, let's cover that, and then you can be sure. And whether it's a yes or a no, that's equally good. But what we do not want here is to land in, I don't have enough information, or there's something missing for me to make this decision, etc., etc., etc. So your job is to guide them in their decisiveness and help them make a, an empowered decision by clarifying all the missing uh, information and commitment that, that might be there for them to make that empowered decision. That's what this is all about. Tracy is saying, haha, that's what I said to you. I need to talk to my husband. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, you know, and, um, uh, you know, I'm going to try to talk about a topic that really requires a lot of time actually uh, to really dive deep. And so you're going to be getting a, a, a sort of an overview here of, of, uh, the most important things to think about. And I am gonna need to simplify this a bit, but uh, I believe that the principles will stay intact if I, if I do my job right here. So that's my ambition here. Okay, so uh, the reason you need to handle sales objections is that if you do not handle sales objections, a lot of people that need your help are uh, gonna fall through the cracks. And when you're not helping other people, you're not helping yourself, meaning that you're not gonna get a client, someone that really, really desperately needs your help. Another reason you need to handle sales objections is because the way you do, the way you do one thing is how you do everything. So if someone comes to you with a problem, if this is the beginning of your client, uh, you know, coach-client relationship, and they come to you with an issue, and you say, well, there's nothing we can do about that, then they're gonna see that, oh, that's what it's gonna be like to work with you, right? They're gonna come to you with something that they're struggling with and you're not gonna actually help them, right? Because if you think about it, if someone says to you, I need to think about it, when you're asking if they wanna join your program or your course, and you say, okay, go ahead and do that on your own, what that means is that if they would start working with you and they come to you with a problem, that's how you would react to them as well, right? You would say, okay, go ahead and try to do that on your own. But that's, not what, that's not what's going on. When someone says, I need to think about it, your invitation to them need to be, great, let's do it together, right? Let's, let's take a look at what is it that you need to think about? What is it that's keeping you from being 100% sure here? How can we make an empowered decision, right? Hi Scott, how are you doing? Uh, good afternoon from Phoenix. Yeah, hi man. Hi and hi from Sweden. Uh, Lorna is saying that, uh, they say they have to talk to their husband when they gets home from work, and I will get back to you later tonight. And they never do. Do I call them back the next day to follow up? Okay, we're definitely gonna cover that as well. Okay, so um, uh, so I think we've covered why you need to handle sales objections. It's for their sake and for yours, and it's also a way for you to operate when you're you. you you're gonna get much better client results when you're helping people be decisive and make empowered decisions. So that's where you need to, that's what you need to practice in real life, right? And that's how you should be doing things as well. Okay, for your own sake, I mean, right? When you make decisions, you need to figure out what's missing so you can take care of it. Okay, 
So where this can start falling apart is if you enter with the mindset that you're trying to make the sale, right? And that's a two-edged sword because on one hand, you are trying to make the sale if you believe that this is the best path forward for them, right? So on one hand, you need to be perfectly clear in your intentions. You need to be clear with the other person that look, based on what we've talked about, uh, from my point of view, it seems that this is the best path forward for you. How do you feel about it? Or do you think there's something I missed here? Do you think there's another path for you, including waiting, that would, that would be better for you, right? And then you discuss it and you come to the conclusion together, right? So in, on one, from one respect, you need to be perfectly clear about what it is you want and why you want it. And you need to be, you know, decisive, right? And really say what you think uh, is necessary for them to get what they're looking for. On the other hand, you need to be totally free from the outcome. If they decide that this is not right for them and we, you have perfectly clarified all the information, etc., then it's just not meant to be, right? And if they come to the conclusion that it's a clear no, then that is equally as good as a clear yes. So you need to be perfectly fine with whatever outcome comes out of this, right? What you need to focus on is the process and, and doing the process properly so that uh, you end up in a clear yes or a no. That's the goal, right? So that's how you want to come into this. And that's how you don't uh, come off as a needy and as desperate and as low value and, and as if you need them more than they need you, because that should not be the case, right? Right? Great. So Lorna is saying, I have a Zoom call, so I have to leave and I will catch the replay. Lorna, I'm going to address your, uh, the, the, I have to get back to my husband, blah, 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 all that stuff. And you can watch the replay and, uh, and, uh, and see what kind of my take on it. And that goes for everyone. If you need to go, just post your question. I'll be happy to answer them afterwards, uh, whether it's in this video or in, in uh, the comments. Okay, great. So the strategy then uh, that we need to adopt here is to do the process properly, right? That's the strategy. And, the pro and to do the process properly means that you handle the objections before they have a chance to arise. And I'm going to explain that soon, how that works. Uh, but basically, uh, if you look at, well, if you're listening to this, I'm going to explain what people are looking at here. Uh, usually this is what it looks like when someone is doing a sales call. First they're gathering a commitment, then they're making the offer, then they uh, reveal the price, and then they handle objections. And this is, this is usually how it goes. And what we want to uh, uh, do is we want to handle the objections before they even happen, right? Because that's how we can isolate them and figure out what's actually going on. Because when someone says to you, I need to think about it, it's harder for you to figure out what they need to think about uh, if you haven't asked them throughout the process. I know that's a mouthful and a bit much to take in if this isn't something you're used to. But uh, uh, the, the, the whole idea here of having a sales call with someone is that you are gathering commitment you are clarifying their situation, what, uh, what they're going through, what it is they want, why their current situation is unacceptable, why their uh, desired situation is irresistible, why they can't do it on their own, why they need help, why they need help now. And then you going through the solution together based on what you see as the problem and, and getting the commitment that, look, it is, do you see any reason why this would not work for you? No. Okay, how confident are you on a scale from 1 to 10 that this is the path forward for you? This is, how, this is the strategy for you to get desired outcome, right? So what you're doing there is that you're gathering commitment as a sort of uh, uh, gateways. So, if, so you're asking, well, can, do you think you can do this on your own? Yes, I can. I think I can. Okay, perfect. Share with me. What's your plan, right? So, and then you work through it together. And if you end up in a situation where they feel that uh, they want to try this on their own, then you just end the call right then and there, even if it's just been five minutes, right? That's the whole idea here is that you have these gateways. And if someone doesn't pass through, you uh, respectfully end the call. 
Because uh, think about it, if someone says to you, well, I think I can do it on my own, then you say, well, perfect, then I wish you the best of luck. You don't need me, right? And, if it, and that's usually where someone says, no, 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 I actually do need help, right? Okay, and, and then instead of you just taking that on face value, you would ask them, and why is that? What, what made you change your mind, right? And then they have to really explain to you why they deserve to stay on the call with you. It's a completely different dynamic than you trying to convince someone, right? So, so what happens there is that they're handling their own sales objections because later on, if, if, uh, if they say that they think they can do it on their own, it, 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 if you have not had this conversation beforehand, right? then there, you're gonna get a completely different answer afterwards, right? So you wanna handle this first. It, it has to be perfectly clear first from their mouth, not yours, why they cannot do this on their own, right? And you can't push them into that. You cannot say, uh, why do you think you can't do this on your own? Because that's a leading question. They're just gonna give you the answer that you're looking for. Instead, what you wanna do is you wanna gently, gently push them towards a no, so they can push back to a yes, if that's the case. So what that means in practice is you would ask something like, so tell me, why, why not just, um, why not just uh, look this up on YouTube, you know? There, there's plenty of courses out there uh, why not just, you know, take something, something for free or something like on Udemy or something like that, right? So can you hear how that question is kind of almost enticing them to tell you, well, actually, I could do that, right? So what you're doing is you're checking their commitment. How serious are they and how aware are they that they need help? And if they're not aware of it, of it you simply end the call, okay? So... I'm not saying end the call immediately. You would ask them, well, tell me, what's your plan? And usually when they, when they tell you their plan, many times they're gonna tell you about stuff that they have uh, already tried in the past that hasn't worked for them. So you can ask them, well, you know, given that you've tried this for uh, a year now, um, what makes you think you're gonna get a, a, a different result this time? Right? So you're having the, you're just, you're not pushing them, but you're asking them questions so that they come to the right conclusion, whether that is, yes, I can do this on my own, or I wanna give this another try, or you're right, uh, this is not working for me, I need to make a change, right? Okay, so the same thing with, uh, you know, why not wait, right? So uh, uh, you can ask them, like, wh why not just wait another, another week or two, why not just wait another month? So you said you've been doing this for, been trying to do this for half a year, why, why not just wait another half a year, like another six months, right? And then t they tell you, right? And then you, you ask them, okay, got it, so, so I understand this is something uh, you feel you need help with and you feel you need help with right now, is that right? Great, now if we go through, if we keep talking now and we decide that this is the best strategy for you and that the program makes sense, etc. Uh, do you see anything stopping you from, from getting started today? Would there be any reason for you to wait any longer, right? And if they say yes, right? If they say, well, I would need to check with my partner, right? Then you would, you would solve that by either, great, why don't we book in another call with your partner so they can be present? Because otherwise, they're just gonna go tell their partner, they're, you know, you're not gonna be able to talk with their partner and handle their sales objections, et cetera, et cetera. So Tracy is asking, can, can you give us an, any idea how many people say they can do it on their own and then they contact you back versus those you never hear from again? It, it, this really depends, right, on what your process looks like beforehand. <laughs> so I usually do a two-step process, which means I have a short call first, where I check if they need professional help, etc. So they're very nurtured when they already show up on the sales call. So, but when I used to do a one-step, uh, you know, system, it's not because there's quite a lot of friction for someone to book in a call. So a lot of people, uh, they're just not gonna say that that they can do it on their own. 
Because remember, you should have asked them, how long have you been trying to do this? And usually people will tell you when it's been half a year or something like that. And if they say, well, I'm just getting started, then you would ask them, well, cool. I mean, you're just entering this world. Um, you know, uh, how do you feel about it? Do you feel that you, you're looking for professional help right away? Or, or uh, do you feel like this is something that you can do on your own? And you can ask that very, very early, right? And then if they say, well, I want to try this on my own. Well, awesome. In that case, what I would recommend you to do is to check out some of my free resources, etc. Because you're not going to be able to, to make a sale uh, to someone that thinks they can do it on their own. It just doesn't work like that, right? I hope that answered your question, Tracy. Okay, so what you need to get commitment on is that they cannot do it on their own. You need to get commitment that they want to they wanna get started right away. And uh, you want to get commitment that the strategy that you're putting together is the right path forward for them. And that's usually where you get the most questions. That's where they will ask you, well, how, how does this work? Would this apply for me? Blah, blah, blah. And you just uh, answer everything. And you reach a point in the conversation where you ask, is there anything else you're wondering here? Is there anything you feel uh, that, that, that takes away your confidence from you? not being able to implement this, right? And then you need to talk about the offer. And when I mean the offer, it's the deliverables. So if someone says, well, I've gone through a lot of courses, I've gotten help with this before, it just hasn't worked for me. You need to ask them, what was it that didn't work for you? What was missing there? And then 99 times out of 100, they will tell you, I didn't get support. I wasn't able to talk with someone directly. Uh, uh, like I, I couldn't get direct help, uh, there was no accountability. It's always a, a lack of connection pretty much. And that's why I recommend and actually urge all of you to have an offer, a program where you have interactive components because otherwise it's going to be very hard for you to give them what they actually need because what people actually need is guidance, mentorship and someone to hold their hand, someone they can ask questions. 24-7 uh, and you, they can get back to them as soon as possible. Group coaching, one-on-one -on -one coaching, everything they need in order. Uh, so there's nothing on your part missing. So it's only a matter of them taking action. That's what we're, that's the kind of offer you should be having, right? Okay. So remember what we're talking about here is how to sell something on the phone that you can charge two, three, four, five thousand dollars or beyond. Uh, so it's worth it to, to do it like this, right? Okay. So um, if you conduct your, stra your strategy call or your sales call correctly, you will have uh, gotten to a point where you, they have clarified both for themselves and for you why they cannot do it on their own. And what really what you've gotten there is the cost of not getting help. Right? Because you should also ask, well, if you, if you still try to do it on your own, what do you think will realistically happen? Where will you be six months from now if you do not do this on your own? And is that acceptable to you? Right? So you need to have a clear... Remember, when, when it comes to, the, to them saying it's too expensive, what's going on there is that they're comparing the wrong thing. Right? Because most people are not used to thinking in terms of uh, cost of lost opportunity, right? A lot of people think, you know, I'm comparing the, the price of this course with this other course, when in fact they should be asking, I'm comparing the, the cost of not having this problem solved to having this problem solved, right? And that goes for if you have an ROI offer where people make money, right? If they're not making that money, that's how much money they're losing each day. Right? But that goes for emotional cost, that goes for relationship cost, health cost, whatever it is. Uh, someone is always paying the price of not having handled the problem. Right? So you should have all this clear uh, before you reveal the price. Right? So uh, when you reveal the price, before you do that, you ask look, we've covered everything now. We've covered if this is something uh, you know, that, uh, you're, that you need help with, something that you truly want to do. Uh, we've covered um, that uh, you want to do it right now. We've covered the strategy for how we would do it. And we covered how it would look like for us to work together. 
based on only this, if the price is right, uh, are we uh, are we a go ahead? Are we go ahead to start today? Right? Is there something stopping you besides the price from starting today? Right? So you want to have that question so that when they say, I need to think about it, it's easier for you to say, well, well ba based on that we you know, agreed that you were all good on this, I take it it's then the, the price. Right? So you have isolated exactly what it is uh, that that uh, that's stopping them, right? So that's why you wanna you wanna get that hundred percent yes before you reveal the price, because then you'll know that is it's something about the price or the value proposition there that's missing, and then you can uh, you can figure out what it is you need to focus on, right? Okay. So the most common one is it's too expensive or I can't afford it, uh, something like that. And again. When you now okay, if you have done your job right, you're gonna get less and less of the sales objections, right? However, you're still gonna get them, and it's completely normal. And you need to appreciate getting them. And really, what you want to see this as is, uh, you know, you're helping. They understand they want to do this. They 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 are scared. They, there's a lot of fear involved because they start to understand that this is, uh, you know symbolizes a big change in their life. There's a big transformation ahead of them. There's obviously going to be a, a time commitment on their part, investing their money. They need to make it work for it to to be worth it. Uh, there's fear of success. There's always fear of change, fear of the unknown, etc., etc. So there's always fear there. So when when you get sales objections, don't take it personally. What, you're, what you have is someone in front of you that is probably a bit scared. And that's a good sign because people are only scared when they feel that, that it matters, that it's important, right? And that's your time to be, you know, calm, confident, and be fearless, or rather be brave together with them. And because when they see that you're brave, it's the call, called the law of state transference, right? When you feel that you're completely fine with this uncertainty in the air, that like, look, things aren't, aren't certain right now, no worries, we'll just solve it. That's how we solve problems, right? So what you're showing there is that when they come to you and they're scared, you don't get scared as well, right? You are, you are confident in your own skin and you'll help them through it. So. So if someone says, well, I can't afford it or it's too expensive, those are actually a bit different, but let's, let's just go with, I can't afford it. This is where we need to, um, this is a major mistake people make, <laughs> is that they start telling people what to think rather than ask them. So the, the beginner salesperson, they would say something like, well, you told me that it's uh, costing you this much to not get help with this. So really, uh, uh, you can afford it, right? Because it's costing you more not to do it. That's a logical argument. But sales is emotional, right? This, is, this more than ever is where you need to remember that you are a team and you're working together towards a, a, an empowered decision, right? So what you want to do here is instead of telling them is you want to acknowledge first. Remember, they are always right in their own way. And you want to acknowledge that, yes, that makes sense from your point of view. And then ask them the question they should be asking themselves in order to make uh, an empowered decision. Right. Because if you think about it, they're not saying no right? They're saying, I can't afford it. And what that usually means, if you've done your job right, is I want to do it, but I, I, uh, I don't think it's worth it, or I don't trust the process, or I don't trust you, or I don't trust the program, the, the offer, right? There's something here they don't trust enough, okay? So what you want to do here is you want to get, you want to get recommitment, right? So you want to ask something along the lines of, uh, you uh, remember, acknowledge first. So first, okay, got it. Uh, you feel like you can't afford it. Can I ask you, um, 
you know, is it that you want to do it, but that you uh, feel that you can't afford it? It's just the financials, right? Are we, uh, besides the financials, aside from the financial commitment, is there something here that's uh, keeping you from being 100% confident that this is the best path forward for you? No. And if they say yes, then you got it. You got the real objection and then you can handle it and you can talk about it. If there's something about, well, I'm just not sure it would work for me. Okay, what is it that makes you think it, would, it wouldn't work for you? What is it? You know, and then you go deeper and you figure it out together until they're 100% sure uh, about it not working or it working for them, right? So uh, once you get the commitment of, yes, I'm totally on board, it's just the financials, got it, okay. And then you, you, you want to get the recommitment. It's not just that they want to do it. It's that it's their goal to do it. Those are two different things. So there's, there's the, the escalation in commitment. So you would ask something along the lines of, great, got it. So you really want to do it. It's just the financial standing in your way. Yes. Do I take it that it's your goal to join today? You just don't see how you can afford it. Right? So what you're doing there is you're making, you're increasing the commitment that they want to join and you're decreasing the truth value of the statement, I can't afford it, because I can't afford it is always false. And the reason for that is that it's not about how many resources you have, it's about how resourceful you are. It's just that people aren't used to thinking like that. Because if you think, if you think about it, if you really, really want something, you're not going to say, I can't afford it. You're going to say, how can I afford it, right? You're going to say something like, I really want to join, I, but I don't have enough money. Is there some other way we can solve this? That's what someone would say if they were 100% on board. So there's always this gap there, right? So you need to help them there or figure out what's stopping them from getting to that frame of mind. So when you ask, do I take it that it's your goal to join today? It's just that you don't see how you can afford it. Yes, that's right. I really want to join. Got it. Um, would you be open to us being a bit resourceful here and finding a solution on how you can afford it so that you can join the program and get desired outcome? And if they say no, then you know that it's something missing, right? If they say no, you can ask something like, well, it sounds to me like there's still something keeping you from being 100% on board, um, uh, given that you're not uh, willing to explore how we could, uh, how you could afford it. Is that right? Right? So you're getting to that point where they're saying, okay, let's take a look at it. How can we afford it? And this is where your creativity comes into mind. This is where you can reduce the offer. You can remove things from the offer. You can, uh, you can turn it into a payment plan. You can turn it into some sort of guarantee. If you really think you can help them, and, and, if, you, know, and you should really think you can help them if you've gotten this far. Uh, you know, if this is something, someone you really want to work with, etc. So you can figure out ways of delivering your product, offer, service in a way where they can pay it off, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So this is where you need to be creative with your offer and break it down and help them find ways of affording it. And this includes looking at their, their personal finances, right? Like, wh what are you, uh, you know, you told me that you really want to join this program. Can I ask you, what are you willing to sacrifice to join this program? Is there something that you're spending money on that is not as important as getting desired outcome, right? So helping them through the problem, not avoiding the problem. That is how you address I can't afford it. And the same thing with I need to think about it. What's going on there is you want to reconnect back to why not wait, the, 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 what they told you on why not wait. So you would say something like, got it. Now, you know, uh, I remember you shared that this is very important to you because X, Y, Z. So um, 
you know, you're sharing with me that you need to think about it. Can I ask you, what is it that you need to think about? What is it that you're wondering that's keeping you from being 100% on board uh, for us to get started today? Right? So the idea, the frame of mind you want to have here is that if you, uh, if you say goodbye, they're going to be left with a lot of questions that you can't answer, right? Because you're not on the phone with them. So the frame of mind should be perfect. That's why, we that's why I took time out of my day to book this call with you so that I can answer all your questions. So let's take a look at what it is you're wondering together because it's going to be much better if we talk about it together rather than you going out there and having to figure it all out on your own. So let's work through it together. It's about not giving up on people, right? If they don't tell you no, what they're really saying is, please, can you help me to figure this out? That's what people are really asking you for, right? They're asking you for help to think about it. Because if you think about it, why should they be thinking about it on their own? Why should only one brain be working on this issue when you can have two of them? Especially when you have the... The, all the knowledge of what it's like working with you, being in your program, getting your help, uh, working through your methods and your systems, etc. Right? So again, remember, we're trying to help people get to an empowered decision, uh, meaning a clear yes or a no. Uh, how can I know it will work? So what you want to do here on this objection, that's another co common one, is you want to kind of... Uh, What's missing here is the commitment they gave to you on when you talked about the strategy and the deliverables. Because if you ask them, working through this strategy, uh, do you see any reason why this wouldn't work? And they say no, right? And how confident are you that this will work on a scale from 1 to 10? And if they say 8, you ask them, well, tell me about that difference. Why an 8 and not a 10? So you're going to get them to a 10. Otherwise, you're not going to offer them this, right? You're never going to get to this objection without, getting, without talking about it first and getting to absolute certainty that this is the strategy that they want to go for, right? Uh, and, um, and the same thing with the amount of help they're going to get, right? So how can I know it will work? Uh, it, it should be about, well, if you ask them earlier what was missing for them to be 100% certain that they can get help, it's like, well, if I can talk with you... Uh, uh, you know, if I can ask you questions throughout the week and if I can talk with you on Zoom, etc., etc., then I'll be sure that, that uh, I'll be confident that this will work. Awesome. Okay, so you want to reconnect to that. And then what you need to remember here is that you can never know it will work. Not 100%. Just like you can't know that the sun will go up tomorrow. We're always dealing with, uh, you know, degrees of uncertainty, right? So if you are talking with someone and they uh, ask you this question, what needs to go through your mind is what is it that's, what is it that's keeping them from being 100% sure that this is right? And what is it that's keeping them from not believing that they can make it work together with you, right? Because... Your mindset should be that if you encounter problems, you'll solve them, right? You'll solve them together. So what is it in your interaction that's not helping, that, that's not making it clear for them that they'll be able to solve it together with you? So you need to ask a question that is sort of like, I, I'm, I'm curious, I'm interested. Uh, what, what, from what place is that uh, question coming from? Usually when people ask me that question, it's because they, they don't trust the process, they don't trust uh, me, they don't trust the program, or maybe they don't trust themselves. Uh, can you share with me which, if it's one of these or if it's something else, right? So, at the end of the day, if they keep pushing forward, like what's the guarantee, you need to say, look, I can't guarantee these results for you unless you have an offer where you're doing things for them. Because when, you're doing, when you have a done with you program, you're responsible for delivering the methods, the strategies, the everything that they need in order to make it work. 
but you cannot want it for them, right? They have to want it, they have to put in the work, and they have to ask for help if they ever get stuck. So you need to turn it around and explain, look, uh, and in this case, you do really need to tell, right? Like this is the exception, but we're gonna end it with a question. So look, we put together this, uh, this program with all the methods, uh, strategies, the, the complete map, we got the, you know, the supportive environment and you have the ability to ask me for help whenever you need to, right? So the only variable here that would not make this work is you, right? It's if you don't put in the work. So my question to you is, are you someone that is committed, that takes action, that, that is an action taker and that asks for help if you get stuck, right? Because that's what determines if this will work, right? If we both put 100% in, we will make it work. That's the mindset that, that you want to go with here. And that's what you're trying to convey. And it, it still ends with a question. Are you the kind of person that takes action, that is committed? Is this important enough for you? Is this something that you're, you are going to ask for help if you get stuck, etc., etc.? So you want to shift the focus around from them thinking that something is gonna deliver results for them to, to them understanding that they can do this on their own but it's gonna take longer or it's not gonna, you know, they're not gonna get it done before they die, <laughs> you know, to be crude, or they can work with you and that's gonna accelerate it. So it's really a matter of time, right? Okay, so let's see if we can address some of the questions, uh, some of the other, and I hope that made sense. If it didn't make sense, let me know in the comments uh, I would love to, you know, interact with you. That's always better. So let me, let me just say, uh, let me see. Okay, they say they have to talk to their husband when they get home from work. And I will get back to you later tonight and they never do. Do I call them back the next day to follow up? So yes, you cannot get commitment from someone that isn't there, right? But what you can do is get commitment from them. So you would ask, great, I understand you. Perfect, you need to talk with your husband or your, your wife. Can I ask you, uh, on your behalf, are you a go-ahead? Are you 100% yes? Right? So you want to get 100% commitment from them, right? It's because they can answer for themselves. So you need to get 100% commitment from them. So you can isolate this and meaning perfect. So uh, the only thing stopping you from starting now is to get a clear yes uh, from your partner. Yes, and I understand you still want to really join the program. Yes, I really, really want to join. And it's your goal to join the program. Yes. So what will you say to your partner if they say no? Right? Because if you really, really want to join and they say no, what will you say to them? Okay, if you really, and then you, you continue asking, well, if you really want to join and they say no, what does that mean? Does that mean that you're not going to do it? Right? It's, is, this, is it your partner that makes the decision here? And then you, you want to ask, and I want to ask you also, imagine if this was the other way around. If your partner, uh, if your partner comes to you uh, telling you that they really want to do something and they really want to join this program and they believe that it's the best path forward for them, would you, would you say yes or no to, the, to, to your partner? Like, well, how, would you say no to your partner in that situation, right? So what you want to do is you want to really prepare them and arm them. And in best case scenario, they're going to say, no, this is, that's right. Uh, you know, I would let them do it. So we might as well just go ahead right now. Because, uh, you know, it's not, they're, they're, what they say is not going to influence my decision. That's really the point you're trying to get to here. But if they do say, well, we always make joint decisions, so we need to figure it out. What you want to do is you want to arm them in such a way where they enter that situation and they're, and they're fighting to get into the program because they really, really want to join the program. And because you've had this conversation about their partner coming to them and they really want to they really want to join uh, uh, something, something that is truly important for them, etc., etc. Remember, you want to get their commitment first so that they are not just, hey, uh, I'm thinking of joining this program, what do you think? They want to enter the conversation on, 
hey, I was on this call today. I've been following this person. I really want to join their program. Uh, I really think this is the best path forward uh, for me. And what, um, uh, but I said that I needed to talk with you. Uh, 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 I, I really think I should do this, right? That's a completely different conversation, right? Now, the other thing you want to do here is you want to get their commitment on time whenever you do a follow-up, right? So if they say, well, I need to talk with my husband. Uh, I'm, a I'm, I'm completely, a I really want to do this. It's just a more of a formality. I need to talk with them. Then you say something along the lines of, great, uh, when will you have talked with your, with your partner? Uh, Seven o'clock. Uh, okay, so here's what I think we should do then. Let's book in a call at eight o'clock, okay? So you've had time to talk with your partner. Let's book in a call at eight o'clock. If it's a no, uh, let's talk about your best path forward uh, without getting my help. I can send you some free resources. Uh, to, to help you as much as possible, uh, given that we're not going to be working together. And if it's a yes, uh, we'll do the payment, I'll help you move, uh, you know, I'll give you a guided tour of the program, I'm going to help you go through this. Okay? Okay, perfect. So in either case, you're going to get on the phone at 8 o'clock, right? And then you book in a call with them right then and there. You're not going to wait to get back to them or anything like that. You're going to book a meeting from a meeting, always. Uh, like that. That's something that my coach uh, came up with. Bam, fam. Um, I hope that answered your questions. So do I call them back the next day to follow up? No, pre uh, preferably uh, you should have decided with them when the next meeting is going to take place. There's always a process. So there's no uncertainty, right? Remember, whenever there's uncertainty, uh, the process has, has broken down. Yasmin is saying, that was great, got lots of, uh, got lots of notes. Perfect. Uh, I'm actually going to do a, a group coaching session with my clients in seven minutes. But I figured that uh, some of you, uh, I'm going to offer you something now if you're not interested in, in offers. If you don't like that, uh, turn this off. Uh, thank you for listening and I'll see you next week. If you are interested in how you can get more help, uh, listen up. Here's how I can help you. Okay? So, I'm going to do this. Let me just make sure we are... Yeah, there we go. So, here's the next step for you. Here's how I can best help you. Uh, let's get on a call together. Uh, I'm going to explain now exactly how it works, uh, what you can expect, and, and why I think this is a win-win for everyone here. So, we're going to uh, book in a call together. During this call, it's 30 minutes. I'm going to ask you some questions so we can figure out what you're doing. So remember, I help people create and sell their high ticket courses, right? And sales is just one part of it. So this call is for you if you're struggling with, with either gathering your leads, uh, launching your high ticket course or making sales, right? So I'll be asking you some questions to figure out how you're gathering your leads, how you are uh, creating and packaging and offering your course and what your sales process looks like, how you make sales. Because if, if you're not getting the results you're looking for, it's one of those things or all three of them that are broken or missing or something is not working properly. Okay? Uh, just want to read what you're writing. Thank you, Tracy. Thanks for all the great info. And I, I hope I can see you in the group coaching session in five minutes. So the next thing we'll do during this call is that we're not just going to figure out what's wrong and what needs to be fixed. We're going to put together an action plan, a customized action plan specifically for you for how you can fix these bottlenecks and remove these constraints and grab these low hanging fruits in your business and start getting results and speed things up as fast as possible. Okay. Now, during this call, um, if I if I think I can help you and, and if uh, I think you qualify for our program, then I'm going to ask you something along the lines of, is this something you want to do on your own or uh, something you, you, you're looking for help with? And that's as salesy as it's going to get. It's not more high pressure than that. I'm not going to convince you of anything. I'm not going to push you because if I need to push you into something, you're not going to be a very good client anyway. You're not going to do the work necessary. I'm looking for action takers, people that are 
uh, going for it, they're committed, and they are, um, they, they really, really want it. They really want to help themselves and help other people, okay? So I'm just going to ask you, uh, is this something you want to try on your own, or do you want my help with this? If you say no, uh, if you say, you know, I want to do this on my own, I'll give you some re free resources, and I'll uh, send you on your way, and I might uh, follow up with you. Uh, actually, I will follow up with you uh, in a few months' time and just uh, check in and see how things are going, etc., etc. If you say yes, I'll explain how my offer works. I'm going to figure out why you want to do this right now, why uh, you feel you can't do it on your own. I'm going to do everything that we talked about here. And if uh, we, we see that you can do it on your own, then I'm not going to offer you my program. So, you know, it's very, it's very basic. It's very simple. It's exactly what I've just been talking about. So this is meant to be a win-win-win. Uh, I win because when I talk with you, I'm going to get better insight into what uh, my ideal clients are struggling with. So that's a big win for me. And it's a big win for you because you end uh, up with uh, cl more clarity about what's not working or what could be done better. You get a, an action plan and uh, there's no commitment here. You don't need to buy something, etc., uh, etc. Et it's not a high pressure sales call. This is just to help you. Okay, so and this helps me as well. So it's a win win win. Now, the only thing I do ask of you is that when you book in your call, which you can do at uh, www.onlinecoursecrets.com slash call. So if you want to book in this call, which I highly recommend you to do if you're into creating and selling your own high ticket course, if you want to learn how to gather your uh, ideal clients without chasing them, if you want to learn how to increase your prices and launch a high ticket course in days rather than months, and if you want to get unstuck with making sales and start uh, selling your course, then uh, I am confident that you're going to end up better after having this call, whether you continue working with me or not. Okay, so if that's you. Go ahead and book in your call at onlinecoursecrets.com slash call. And the only thing I ask of you is that you please uh, answer some questions about your business so that we can make the most out of our call. I used to do these calls for 45 minutes, but uh, a lot of time goes to waste when I need to ask you uh, a bunch of basic uh, practical logistical information about uh, things that you could have answered beforehand. And that way... Uh, you're going to get much more value out of your call and you're not going to have to answer a bunch of uh, questions during the call that frankly goes faster with text. So that's all I ask of you. That's all I want and it's both for your sake and for mine. So uh, go ahead and uh, book your call at onlinecoursecrets.com slash call and I look forward to talking with you. I hope you enjoyed this and I look forward for the next episode of this podcast. And now I'm going to go and coach my clients and students. If you're in the program, we're getting started in one minute. And I'll see you in the next one. Take care.